and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for our first deck and our 12 hour stream today with a whole bunch of fun decks as you can see on the left hand side uh, we're starting we have two donation decks to kick the day off with we're starting with Demir Flash here so this Demir Flash was um, the the person that made this deck uh, basically kind of took the Soltai Flash deck that we've been playing and having some good success with and everything and didn't uh didn't want to play three colors didn't want to use like a bunch of wild cards on all the the three like for all the lands for all the three colors and and get the werewolves and everything like that and just wanted to play two color and lower the curve a whole bunch and um you know see if we can be aggressive with that so that that's what we're going to be doing today as you can see here we have we have 12 threats um with brineborn Maybe I could split this up better, a little better. We have Brineborn, Cutthroat, Spectral Sailor, and Terramander. So those are our threats that we have going on here. What's up, Gaffer? Even though Terramander can't be played at instant speed, it's still just a really good one mana threat because it, it's a it's a flyer that can. Um, there we go. Now that this looks a little better now for the curve. <laughs> we had too many one drops. It was just off the screen, um, but it looks. Uh, Terramander can uh, hold a Curious Obsession pretty well. You know, it's one mana, and they can also be really big if we have a lot of spells in our graveyard, which which the good chance that we do with having all of these spells here. It'll be to see, uh, like we'll have to see if this is if this is uh, as good as or better than just playing mono blue. I am a fan of of mono blue these days, uh, but I mean that's basically. On I'm saying that without really playing too much mono blue myself, but just like playing against it and just mono blue in theory. I, I like the deck, um, but we're you know we're splashing black here for for removal spells. You know, like mono blue doesn't have removal, and that's what our deck offers is we have some some removal in here. Um, so yeah, that that's that's kind of what we have here. Um, that's about it. That's our that's our deck. We're trying to go under our opponent. A big part of our deck is going to be having Creature plus Curious Obsession, of course. But yeah, hopefully it'll, it'll work out. Hey. All good, Gaffer. Thanks, thanks for the reset. Okay, so just like all donation decks, we're heading on over to our traditional constructed queue. And probably what we're going to be playing a, a lot of today. We've been doing a lot of ranked recently. We have Rank Up Sunday, Tier 1 Tuesday. I think we'll probably be doing these queues today. I like the structure of them. Play until we win 5 or lose 2. See if we get some 5 win decks today. Breaded chicken with Swiss bacon and spicy barbecue on a garlic roll. That's a good favorite sandwich. So this is the problem with only having 12 threats in the deck. It's like, this is definitely a reasonable hand, not one to like, you know, it's three three lands with very good mana, like perfect mana, good interaction. We just don't have like that threat. We do have the opt that helps find us, find it, find it for us though. So I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and try this out. See if this works out for us. Hello. Hey, Louie Way. Welcome to the channel as well. Thanks for that support. I really appreciate that. All right, good threat. All right, update our sub goal. Fourth sub of the day. So yeah, we're doing our 12-hour stream here today. Since we hit 20 total sub goals, man, I love disfigure. That's a great one. One mana there. Such a good tempo play. Awesome. Reach diamond. 
with the Gruul midrange deck with the 75% win rate. That is very impressive. Good job. Alright, let's just go ahead and syncopate this. Oh, you're welcome, Louis Wei. You're welcome. Nah. No Soren for you. I'm already liking our deck here. We're just getting rid of everything. Now we got the 6-6 six, six flyer, which that's pretty big. Okay, fix that up. Go, Terry, go. You may draw a card like there's a like there's a world where you wouldn't want to draw the card. <clears throat> so yeah, Tyrant's Corn is able to, to bounce the Sanctum Seeker, but then you know we can also bounce one of our own creatures to save our own creatures from removal. But alright. That was a pretty sweet little game there. That was a good little game. We got underneath the vampire deck that has a lot of cheap stuff and kept them from doing anything. All right, let's definitely get this other disfigure in. And then do we want cast downs? But no, I mean, like, the, the Black Splash was really nice with, like, the Disfigure for the Adanta Vanguard and everything. Worked out pretty well. Hmm. Maybe I take out Lookout's Dispersal in this matchup with them having a bunch of cheaper things also. Maybe I just play another cast down and disfigure and no. I mean, I'm not sure which one is, is worse for us, dispersal or syncopate. They're both good on turn four, but they're not good in the early turns. I guess dispersal is probably better than syncopate. Do I, I guess I would rather have cast down than noxious grasp. Yeah. All right, so maybe go this. Well, they, they'll also have, like, removal for our stuff, right? Especially after sideboard here. Like, they're going to have, like, their cast downs and mortifies and stuff like that that we're going to want to counter to keep our creatures alive. Yeah, our creature count is low. That's the thing about our deck. We're, we're a sneaky little deck here. If I Curious Obsession this thing, I don't have Negate available. I 
I think maybe I maybe I go cutthroat here and then I can have curious obsession plus negate. Plus a Soren would be a kind of a problem. Alright, well they got their their creatures out of disfigure range now, unfortunately. I shouldn't have played that island first. But works out. I wouldn't mind them playing a Soren, because we'd be able we'd be able to negate that. Okay. Uh, they've been in the I'm too scared to play stuff, I don't want it to get countered part of their life right now. So four, five, six, seven. Ugh, casting disfigure makes it eight. Not quite lethal. We'll just block with the Spectral Sailor. This deck's been pretty fun to play. Should have this. They'd have to have two removal spells because we have the negate for one of them. All right. This figure was pretty sweet. All right, pretty cool looking deck there. That was a good. That was a good game. Good match right there. Yeah, this is this is a very good budget deck. Yeah. Yeah, are there any like rares in here? I mean, there there's the the lands. Are there any other rares in here? That's what uh, That's what the original concept was. Um you know, if you were taking the the Sultai flash deck and kind of making a and making a budget Alright, let's see if we get any of these disfigures again. Sorry, getting situated there. So, gonna go... 
I realize that it's it's better to go double island here because if I need to, like if I feel like spell piercing, you know, they go like history banalia and I want to spell pierce it, then it's better for me to be able to go like spectral sailor spell pierce. The battle of the one power creatures <laughs> over here. The battle of the one drops. You think they have raised the alarm? Nah. Yeah, I played a Sultai control deck. Um, called it Sultai Dreams. Uh, not not too long ago. Hmm. They have too much mana. I do want to update the Sultai Dreams list. I think it's I think it's a few cards off. I have some ideas of how to update that list. I guess I'll probably play that again on on Friday, or maybe I play that later on instead of Chandra Tribal. Yeah, I'm thinking Cutthroat and Spell Pierce also. Still, just tap taps them out, you know. So they don't get to Law Rune Enforcer and tap anything. And also in incentivizes my opponent to Prison Realm away the Cutthroat instead of the Spectral Sailor. Yeah, this deck is pretty sweet, isn't it? Just so efficient. Everything costs one or two. Shocking in here, so we have the ability to draw a card with Spectral Sailor if we want. Though I will likely be cast downing something. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, do I kill the aspirant? So they don't have a flyer. Or do I kill the enforcer so they don't get to tap stuff? I think the aspirant. Yeah, it's basically most most all decks in standard like to play sorcery speed. All right, more disfigure, more noxious grass, more cast down, less. Oh no. Less. Spell Pierce? Are they going to be able to pay for Spell Pierce pretty easily? Mm. Syncopate, Dispersal. Let's 
like if we take out maybe one negate and the dispersals and the syncopates how does this look I guess dispersal is kind of important. Syncopate slash dispersal, like those things counter the elephant. The elephant can be kind of a big problem, but I guess if we're if we're keeping the board clear and like, you know, killing all their other creatures with all these removal spells. You like dispersal more than spell pierce? Maybe like the first dispersal over the fourth spell pierce? Spell Pierce, Spell Pierce is just so awesome. Yeah, I feel like Spell Pierce is going to mostly always counter stuff. You know, History, Benalia, Conclave Tribunal, all that kind of stuff. I'm not sure if cutting a Spell Pierce is right. Yeah, Petty, I'm kind of with you. I'm kind of thinking that Spell Pierce could be awesome here. Hmm. Man, I do like Spectral Sailor Obsession. We're on the draw, right? So we draw a card on turn one. We play Island. We end step Sailor. We untap with Curious Obsession. We we draw our card for turn. We hit them. We get to draw another card. So we're looking at looking. We're looking at drawing three cards here, and then just needing like black mana. And then we get to like play play black source disfigure something and then we have a bunch of removal left that seems like a pretty pretty realistic thing that's going to be happening here this could could certainly backfire We want to see Watery Grave, Drowned Catacombs. Oh man, that's such a good thing to disfigure. Watery Grave, Drowned Catacombs. Come on, dual land. Dual land, dual land, dual land, dual land. You can do it, deck. No. 0 for 2. We have three draws, 0 for 2. Oh, we gotta get there on the third one. Come on, deck. Dual land. No. Ugh. 0 for 3. Darn. Even an island, we would have had to dive down, which would have been awesome. Uh That island was one card too too late. It's definitely a risk, which that was a risk I wouldn't have taken at all on the play, but I tried it on the draw with that extra card. I like seeing all these Adanto Vanguards that my opponent's playing though. I think our deck's very good against Adanto Vanguard. So I like I like that to see my opponent playing him. Um Trade in dive down for four life. Basically a seven life swing. Instead of me taking three, they take four. Yeah, we have a sweet lineup for today. We are playing all all great decks today. Grixis mid range, yeah, that that could be a good one. 
Definitely did some work there with that one. Yeah, there is no no gruel deck. We've played a lot of gruel decks the last five, six days or so. It's been a gruel deck almost every day. So the the thing is they're mostly most every single one of the decks has a black. Basically all the decks have black in them somewhere. Yeah, kitty, it's not looking great for us. That thing just costs four. Not sure if I like all these removal spells. Like, maybe we have too many removal spells, honestly. Let's definitely get the spell pierce back in here. I'll cut two of these cast downs. Yeah, let's do that. Or no, negate. Yeah, let's do this. Gotta have more protection for our creatures. They're too much. Too much removal. Would you suggest cry in the sideboard if you find my Elo's meta is playing more aggro decks such as this? Yeah, Cry the Carnarium's definitely a good card against aggro decks. Um, oh, as far as Cry in this sideboard, it's kind of tough. If you're talking about like this specific deck, it's tough to play Cry the Carnarium. Like, I would rather have Legion's End than Cry the Carnarium, but. It's tough for this deck to be playing that. So I don't like four lands. Our our fourth land's a dead card. We have some good removal and stuff. Oh jeez. Do we go all in? I like the all in plan here. On the play. All in, baby. <laughs> We're all in. Chips to the middle. They just can't have two mana removal. If we untap, we have negate. So we're good if we untap. Just gotta untap. Yeah, no baffling in. Just play your Danto Vanguard. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Let's find some disfigures. Nah, not even bluffing the spell pierce. We're all in. We mulled down to five. And we're facing an aggro deck. Got out race. Hey, Scotty, good morning. So 
We don't get to cut their oats. But we also get to brick an attack from them, so that's good. Demir Flash. Ugh, I don't have any Legion's Ends, but I have a bunch of Disfigures. Um, yeah, whatever. Yeah, it is, Scotty. Yep, I I updated the you know I updated the mono black control, but it's the same kind of list there. It's three, six, seven, eight. Puts us down to eight. Yeah, they have one card. We just have to make sure we stay alive. I wouldn't mind drawing another black source here. Or not. All right, so I have the ability to not just grasp the enforcer. Just go cutthroat block one of these things. Yeah. Cause like the Terramander be lethal on its own, Cutthroat should be lethal on its own. All right, got the victory. Nothing wrong with being at gold two. The uh, the season's gonna end in just two hours, so. Um. You can see the prizes somewhere. I don't know. Don't they tell you the prizes somewhere? There you go. So if you're at gold two right now, if you push for platinum three or platinum, I guess you do. You get another pack, and you do get an, an extra card style. Uh, you get the rare card style also. So that's that's not bad. Getting you know if you if you like card styles, I don't know exactly the card, um, but you get one booster pack. Which is, you know, a, a thousand cold is what a booster pack is worth. I'm not sure what the card arts are this month. I think somebody said them before. I don't remember what they said, though. Maybe, like, Agent of Treachery, maybe? 
I don't remember. Which deck do you think is better versus mono red? Out of out of what are my choices? Just out of all of the decks, what deck is really good against mono red? That would be Esper. It's Cruel Celebrant for gold. Okay, that's a good one. So that's the uncommon. There's usually an uncommon for gold and a rare for uh, platinum. Naya Feather or Simic Ramp? Probably Naya Feather. Especially if Naya Feather has Healing Salve. Is that the name of the card? Something like that. Healing Grace. Whatever that one mana card is, you can have a couple of those in the sideboard. Boros is probably better than Naya, just less painful mana base. As far as Feather decks are concerned against Mono Red. Man, this deck's pretty cool. It's like Mono Blue, but then we have some black spells. Reassembling skeleton. No, don't reassemble that skeleton. No. So, this is kind of the problem with Curious Obsession here. If I play Curious Obsession, then I don't have Lookout's Dispersal. And by the way, that's why I led with Sailor, because of Dispersal. Our opponent does have many cards. They look like, you know, like they're a Rakdos aggro kind of deck. Countering something next turn could certainly be important. I'm just going to keep the dispersal up. What about a Simic Ramp with the two plus, the two and a green uncommon of M20, shock, heal for six, and you can take back a creature or a land back? Oh, yeah, that card's, that card's not that great against Mono Red. I know what you're talking about. It, it does gain six life, which is good, but it doesn't affect the battlefield, and it costs three mana. Three's a lot of mana. I, I think Feather is going to be better against Mono Red. Um, yeah, Pulse of Marasa. Yeah, that's the that's the card that you're talking about there. Remodded Reveler is not like the best thing to be countering, but I'm playing my spells. Our opponent's pretty deliberate. Just fine, especially if they're they may be a newer player and want to take their try time thinking about exactly what to be doing. It's difficult playing against instant speed decks. I'll give them that. They may be 
cooking some mac and cheese also for lunch. If I opt first, I could find a counter spell for that, but then I won't get the counter on the cutthroat. It's probably worth it. Ugh! Spell Pierce, you're killing me. You could be so good. Ugh. Alright, so I didn't get the counter on the cutthroat. I gave myself a chance to keep the sailor alive. But now we just have too many lands. We're flooding out here. How's that a greedy play? That was the... How was my play a greedy play? What was, what was greedy about what I just did there? Whoa. Why not let me play this? I just said no blocks and then it skipped the turn. I had two mana still. Hey, what's up, Key Tattoo? Yeah, I think that's what I'm playing here. I think I got 21 lands. Yeah, I think I'm at 21 lands. I could have one too many islands and one not enough swamp. I really wanted to have a lot of blue sources with the Curious Obsessions and everything. If you didn't see the, the deck list, I didn't change very much at all. I just put in Terramanders, basically. Um, I'm going to miss... With rotation, I'm probably going to miss Lyra Dawnbringer. Or Resplendent Angel. Resplendent Angel is a good one, too. Yeah, those angels played the heck out of them. Hey, Chief Sef. Good evening. All right, well, replacing... Replacing the Noxious Grass with Disfigure is super easy. Now what else do we want to do? I I am a little worried about Priest of Forgotten Gods. That card That card could mess me up.
Maybe a cast down for a spell pierce. I haven't seen too many scary red things. I don't want I don't want Sir Eulen Drake. Could see playing Ether Gust. We'll see more. Like Chandra's not very scary. I may just go with this. Hey Samantha. You've been playing a Jund land destruction deck? That's a pretty sweet one. I like that. I'm a fan. I bet Spectral Sailor is going to be a sweet card style. Don't have it quite yet. It's on the get it with the mastery system. We'll get there. Time to water some graves. Don't you hate whenever you have to water the graves, right? Like your like friends out of, is out of town, and they're like, "Hey, can you? I'm going to be out of town this weekend. Can you come over to water the graves for me?" So spooky, so scary. Never like having to water the graves. Or maybe I'm thinking of watering plants. No, I think watering graves. Ow. Rude. That is true. If you do water the graves too much, it'll turn into an overgrown tomb. You have to you have to watch out for that. It's a very a very good point. Could use a removal spell here. They're not removal spells. No, I don't have any specific Boros Feather list myself. Don't 
So five, six, seven, eight. Removal spell. There we go. All right. Dude, this Demir flash deck is sweet. Mono blue with removal. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I didn't actually top deck a Lin. Maybe today's going to be different. Maybe this is what happens whenever we're playing early. I'm level 61. That's pretty good. I've I purchased levels twice, but I purchased probably around eight to ten levels total. I also I per well I purchased levels the very first time. Like I did like the boost to get an extra ten levels kind of thing. And then like two other times to get like another eight to ten. Nice, you got your uncommon cat? Awesome. Uh, what about this hand? If, if Disfigure is good, this hand is very good. If Disfigure is bad, this hand is very bad. Depending on the matchup. Kelotaka says keep. Storm says kitty. Which doesn't help me too much. Okay, which which one of you are, are out of here? Syncopate? Yeah, syncopate. Bum, 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 bum. Crixus. Do I block this thing with with Spectral Sailor? I kind of think so. Spectral Sailor could be, or like that thing could be like really tough. Would not have been a bad disfigure. Hand to have. All right, so if I play Cutthroat, then they are, they're going to take Obsession, and they know about these things, and they know to play around Spell Pierce and to play around this. So I think I have to Spell Pierce that. Hey, Charot, it's going good. Hostage Taker, are you kidding me? I 
Cast down. Ooh, dive down. That's a good one. That's a good one, too. Man, Brian Bourne Cutthroat's messed up. It's just Flash Goif. The Flash Goif. Scooped it up. Yeah, it's a two man and nine eight, no problem here. No, I haven't played any modern recently. Oh, sorry, Tony. Uh, yeah, you have a deck you want to donate, a few questions, but where do I go to make the deck list for you? Um, do I need a quick rundown? I don't. I don't necessarily need a quick rundown, but you can. You can put a quick rundown if you'd like. You know, it doesn't certainly doesn't hurt. Um, but there's a there's a description part here. You go. You can just put it here on MTG Goldfish. Is a great link there. Um, I guess I should I should maybe have that in. I don't know. But there's a place for a description to the deck, which is optional. But um, so if you want to have any type any rundown for the deck. Of course, let me know what day you want me to... I'm not going to be streaming tomorrow. As you see, no stream tomorrow. But Friday through, you know, into perpetuity, you let me know what day you want me to play the deck, and then first, second, third, or fourth, which slot you would like your deck played. Okay. Easy sideboarding, Noxious Grasp out, cast down in. Call it a day. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have one evening without my stream, I know. Hopefully y'all can can handle it. I only took one one day off in July. And this is July 31st is gonna be my second day off in the month. I hope that's okay. I hope y'all can handle it. That's what I usually do. I usually take a day off about every two weeks or so. Just kind of have the day to relax and recharge and stuff like that. Whoa. I started playing an instant and they were done. They're just done. Some people don't like instants. All right, so that we are 4 and 0. We are on the final boss. We got to get our final boss playlist up here. Y'all get your final boss emotes in the chat. Yeah, there's no there's no messing around here with this deck. Not sure if I want to be casting opt 
yet or not. I guess, yeah, I do. I do. I cast the op now. Considering saving op for after we have cutthroat in play, but no, it's it's worth it to play op first. All right, another aggro deck. Hey, Chris, good morning. <laughs> All right, Valiant, I'll try. Um, it's going to be a tough one to win, honestly. So they got three cards left. If I let them have this, they get to flip Legion's Landing and just make a whole bunch of tokens and everything. And that's pretty diff that's pretty tough for me but not letting them have it is also kind of tough for me oh this is right the vampires uh Not in a good spot. This two power life linker. It's tough to race. There we go. That's that's good. That's a good card. Oh, I should... No, yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> yeah, basically everybody's going main deck Legion's Ends these days, which is which is worth it. I love the card. But Legion's End is very good against the... Um, you know, all the zombie tokens and everything. Yeah, the Scapeshift metagame. Alright, so you in, you out, you in, you in. Taking the syncopates out. This could be tough for us. We'll see. We have been we have been beating a lot of the aggro decks so far though. So we've been playing against lots and lots of aggro decks. All right. Game number 2. Uh, 
we're gonna need to find some threats. I don't think I am spell piercing anything on turn two. I want a Danto Vanguard here. I wanted a Danto Vanguard there. That's not good. There's another Danto Vanguard. I mean, it's really not that bad. If I draw a threat, I can probably outpace a Danto Vanguard with the Curious Obsession and everything. I just need to draw a threat. Doesn't really seem like my opponent's got too much besides the Vanguard going on over here now that we killed the Knight. Threat. All right, Terry Mander. The problem is they have enough removal. They have enough mana. Sorry to, to pay for spell pierce pretty easy, pretty easily for a removal spell. So I'd really like a like a negate would be really nice. All right, another threat. Cutthroat will do. Have to do at least. It's not ideal.
All right, well, Spell Pierce didn't work out very well there. And yeah, I used that Disfigure a little too early. That's what happens when you're on the draw. And you get a little behind, though. Don't think I want to change anything about about the deck, though. I was definitely thinking about maybe maybe replacing a spell pier with a duress. Because how they're going to just be sitting back on removal. Maybe, like, playing duress here. You know, before threats can, can help. But I think if we have our, you know, threats, like, on turn one turn two right away, then have Spell Pierce to help him out. It could, could help. Yeah. Let's go to the next song and playlist. All right, game number three. We do have an extra life. We haven't lost yet, so if we lose this, we do get to play one more match. And still try for the five win. So a loss, a loss doesn't hurt us too much. Need another blue source. Because if I go Curious Obsession on turn two, then I don't have Spell Pierce or Negate available. Need to draw another blue land. Another blue land. I only have three swamps in the deck. <laughs> the deck's mostly all... Like, all the lands are blue besides three swamps. <laughs> so the two of the three swamps is not, not ideal here. This looks very good for our opponent. Blue mana? Come on. Let's just, just give it a try. Oh, jeez. 
because I can't I can't counter like they play a vampire and sack the vampire do three damage to the sailor kind of thing. This was not good for us. So the reason why I used this figure out there is because they have like vampires, you know, like the more expensive ones they could be putting into play that don't um, that don't uh, don't die to this figure. And so I, I got, you know, when I have just this figure cast down, <clears throat> the only reason to keep The only reason to keep uh, Disfigure in the hand is because of Adanto Vanguard. That's the only card. And so when, and they have more cards. The cast down kills, so I kept the cast down and, you know, got punished. But this is perfect here. I can't, I can't beat the Soren. The Soren just being able to, to sack stuff and do three damage all the time. Yep. If we would have just had one more blue mana, I think we would have won this game. Would have been able to... Would have had that extra little bit. We should have let them lose another life. No, they're just going to gain life with Soren. This is just over. I guess I could attack Soren. Four and one. And so we saw from that game the reason why that I am playing ten islands and three swamps. <laughs> we just need gotta have extra blue mana. Gotta have multiple blue mana. So that's that's what we found. That's what we saw there that game. But uh, yeah, final bosses are tough, but we're not, we're not out of it. Our deck's definitely going to stumble at times. It's going to happen. That was just a, that was a game that st we stumbled. Two games in a row, you know, we didn't have the threat at all the, the second game, and then didn't have the second blue mana the third game. It's going to happen.
Guess it's better to play the swamp. All right, yep, we got the second life. Have to exile a card from our hand? I don't really want to do that. Maybe I could have just, just exiled the Disfigure and let them have a 1-1 and kept the Syncopate and then played Spectral Sailor. Maybe I should have done that. Man, they just fogged my entire last attack. Yeah, we got some Grixis stuff going on over here. I'm not sure exactly what they got going on, besides just Grixis stuff. Yeah, I kind of wish I'd just let them keep the 1-1 one -one and just discard the Disfigure. earlier. Also shakers are good. Come on, removal spell. Darn. It's not looking great for us right now. Yeah, I guess I could have dis disfigured and then terramandered last turn. Getting more information about our next turn, but yeah, I, I could have done that. Gross. There goes one of our two spells. Wouldn't mind drawing another Curious Obsession here. That'd be a good one. Tyrant Scorn. You're too late. I needed you earlier. I guess I can still bounce the Sailor and replay it. All right, you're not you're not too late, I suppose. Hmm. 
Give me this. Got my own hostage shaker. Hostage shaker right back. Oh, that's rude. Dive down should be game. Servitude. All right, Storm. See you back here in a bit. This is a matchup that can be tough. Let's get a couple of these duresses in here. Yeah, there are basically no yeah, there are no rares in this deck besides the dual lands and these crafty cup purses, which you don't really need the crafty cup purses. This is a good budget deck. Still want all four spell peers? Maybe three spell peers, three duress. Alright, so we're taking out the Noxious Grasp, which is a dead card. One Syncopate and one spell pierce for the three duress. Let's give this a try. Alright, up a game. Ugh. Pretty good looking little hand. What a mind a drowned catacomb. That's that's whenever you water the graves too much, you get a drowned catacomb. I'm so used to playing with the, the flash creature. This one doesn't have flash. <laughs> Maybe should have played that before. Basic Mountain. You don't see Basic Mountain too often. In Grixis decks. Refined and a far better dresser than you. I don't think you'll be needing that. Go. 
All right, we get our card back. Yeah, this deck's pretty fun to play. Especially when you draw creatures in Curious Obsession. Makes it a lot more fun. Of course, there's another Ritual of Sid. I could regret this. I'm not going to play the other Terramander now that we see Ritual of Sid, but we'll just play these things out. Okay, not bad. I'm not going to play the other Terramander, though. All right. Save a cutthroat and then replay it. They have a third sweeper. We're definitely in trouble. I didn't like that second one either. But they got a third one. We're really in trouble. Puts a counter on the cutthroat and doesn't let them surveil one. Might as well cast in the gate. Yeah, they they sure look like they like their discard. Lots of discard stuff running around here. Removal no. Well they got a chump with the bolus. Nickel Bolus, the chump blocker. No. Ugh. So close. Play land. my opponent to play some lands. Oh, poor Bolas, right? Dy yeah, dying to a one mana fish. Stop drawing spells and I'm drawing lands. I only have 21 lands in my deck. My opponent's probably got more than five lands over here. Just tap out. All right, so 
17 cards, there's 5 lands, so 18th card, there's the 6th land. I guess I should have played the cutthroat first. Would have been a 3 2. Darn it. Our final play our final playlist ran out. Do I trade with both their creatures? Because these things can pump. It's so like if I if I don't trade with both their, these creatures, these things can be three threes. But I'm like kind of out of threats. Well, I'm not out, but I mean, used up a lot of threats. I guess this is threat number five out of twelve. I have seven, seven out of twelve left. Hey, after wizard. Yeah, with them having negate for their last card, I thought their last card was like lightning strike. I uh, definitely wish I would have played the cutthroat first. Come on, draw a sailor. On deck, draw sailor. I'm not going to play duress until I find a creature. If you surrender now, I'll still have Ugh. time for tea. Really hope that's this turn. Ugh, what a whiner. And why are we drawing all these lands? We're going through six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I mean, it's not. It's not too bad, honestly. Twelve and half the deck. I mean, well, it's, it's another three draws before it's half of our deck. Ten and a half is half of our lands. So if this Davriel wants to do damage to us, they gotta minus it again. But we've only seen we've seen five of our twelve threats so far, half the deck, which, you know, again, that's those aren't the ratios that we want, but they're you know certainly in line with half. Perish the thought. Come on, deck. Is 
So that's... It's 14 of our 21 lands that we've seen so far, that we've drawn so far. Did we scry any to the bottom? No. Should be taking duress here, I would assume. Can't quite draw two cards. Can draw one card with Spectral Sailor. So I have Counter Magic for six lands. Opponent now has six lands open. The immortal Nicole Bolas will be your end. I will wipe your bloodline. <laughs> you have no weakness I cannot explore. Uh, if they had Thieves Sanity, that would have been bad. To hear that disfigure. I think we have this. Counter unless they pay four. So what I need them to do is play, you know, like the Nickel Bulls, Dragon God, something like that that taps a lot of lands. Ooh, maybe we don't have it. They didn't tap out. Ugh. Gosh, that plays around Spell Pierce too. Guess we're drawing a card. Hmm. Darn it. I don't like our chances now. Let your weak minds crumble. Yeah, that's it. Uh, so, we got to watch out for a bunch of Ritual of Soots. That was not something I was too prepared for. Definitely grab the Syncopate back on the play. I'm supposed to be playing Sir Eulendrake to get more threats in here. I cut the two disfigures. We have a couple hard counters. We have some negates. But yeah, we don't we don't want to have, you know, twenty something cards left in our library like we had there. We don't want the game to go that long. Yeah, cut purse is for scape shift. You play you don't play cut purse in response to scape shift. You let them scape shift, put all their lands into play, get all the triggers for all the zombies on the stack, and then whenever all the triggers are on the stack, then you play the cut purse, and then all those triggers resolve and they all and you get all the zombies instead. Yeah, we have Tyrant Scorns. Tyrant Scorns are in summons. They're just on summon plus. Yeah, we we only went through 
we only saw half of the creatures in our deck that that last game. We only saw six of the twelve. You know, we when we it didn't seem like we had creatures left, but we still had a lot of creatures. We were at the point where creatures were like twenty five percent of our deck. Oh, come on. Seriously? Disfigure? Ugh. All we needed was not disfigure. And we... <laughs> We are golden. At least our opponent looks like they don't they don't draw lands, they're gonna have to go to discard, they're gonna have to start discarding stuff. So that's good. No, they drew lands. Ugh. You can see Hawkeye's right back here. He's laying on the couch back there. You can see him back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just had two mana removal spells, we would have been perfectly fine. deck. Can't even get a creature. Just give me a creature. Can't be this hard. Creature, you've got to be kidding me. My deck is killing me here. So we're going to need a lot of creatures now. There's 11 more creatures in here. I've only seen one. No, I should keep that in hand for the Fen Lurker and cards like that. I should... I'm should. i keeping the next land in hand, but my third swamp, you know, that's, that's all the swamps in the deck. We don't need that much black mana. I should have kept that in hand. <sighs> okay. We got a creature.
Now time for us to use all these spells in our hand back and forth. And they're going to win, of course. Man, our 21 land deck is crushing it with these lands. They're doing a very good job draw they're doing a very good job drawing spells. So maybe they'll have to move to discard here sometime soon. I mean at some point we have to draw creatures and not draw lands, right? So there are four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we started, so our deck starts with 21 creatures, or sorry, 21 lands and 12 creatures. We now have 10 lands and 10 creatures left in the deck. It's now tied up. There are now more creatures than lands when we start with 12 and 21. Yeah, right? Yeah, we have we have all of our basic swamps in the deck, all three of them. Got all those. We're good there. I mean, that's just gonna take negate, but I guess I don't let them surveil. Ugh, four games in a row. I'm just going back to the normal playlist. We've gone through like the the final boss playlist like multiple times now because these two games, these two rounds are taking a long time. Just going to go back to our normal playlist. That's what we need. Our final boss playlist isn't helping us out. Hmm. This one's not helping us out too much either. Yeah, this is still the final match. We're down to eight lands and still have ten creatures left. <laughs> we start with 12 and 21. How many lands in a row is this? Is this six lands in a row? Two-thirds of our lands and half the deck. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, that's a card. Yeah, it's got to be just a bunch of spells from here, right? The thing is, is we know our, our opponent's just chilling with seven spells over here. So, like, I, I can't beat seven spells with these crappy things that I have in my hand. I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to just use the cards in my hand because I wanted to, them to just have to start discarding. So them drawing like Thought Erasure is awesome for them to force me to use these things. My hand's awful. I, I can't really imagine that I'm going to that I'm going to be winning this game. Yeah, we played... <clears throat> they had Disfigure, which we hadn't seen all match, but we played turn one Terramander, and we had a ton of stuff for the Terramander, and it was going to be awesome. And, you know, we had the Curse Obsession that we, we drew on turn two. Like, but then they, they had turn one Disfigure to kill it. If we just untapped there on turn one, this game, we would have won this game already. Our opponent doesn't want to tap their mana. As you can tell, like, they're not... They weren't pumping the Lurker because they didn't want to use their mana because they are scared of flash threats and stuff. I don't I don't want Sertros Kanta at all in this deck. I could see Sertros Kanta in the sideboard. I don't think it's a main deck card at all, but I could see it in the sideboard against control decks like this. If if that's the case though, if you're bringing in as Kanta, then you're going to need uh, threats that are spells, you know, like you're going to need like planeswalker type cards like you know, Jace Cunning Castaway, Mu Yanling, I don't know, things like that also, but I don't think I really want to be there. I think these are just pretty insanely bad draws that we've had here. And that changing the deck because of two little games like this isn't worth it. <laughs> well, I'm not winning this, cutie pie. I'm conceding any second now. That'll do it. <clears throat> All right, so we had so we had a, a good league with the deck overall, and it was a, it was a lot of fun to play. We just had we're gonna have some inconsistencies here with twelve creatures. It's gonna happen. You're just gonna have variants that that comes up, and you're gonna have those kind of games. And we just had those four games in a row of just of tough tough games you know like we had a game three that if we had a second if we had a second blue source we would have won the game the first game three and we had the second game three that if our opponent didn't have disfigure on turn one we would have won that one so it's it's you know really really close margins to winning or losing whenever you're playing a deck like this but um overall it's really fun and so if you're looking for like a budget deck this is this was a really good budget deck there was only you know, just only the the eight rare dual dual lands. That's it for rares. You can you can replace cut purses with something else. You don't have to play cut purses. You know, like they're in there for the, like the scape shift matchup, but um, you know, like the drowned catacombs are the only rares that are that are rotating. The water graves don't rotate. Um, yeah, thief of sanity could be a really good sideboard option. That's a good one. Like, I think Thieves of Sandy would be a sideboard card. I wouldn't want it main deck. I, I liked this main deck, honestly. 
I liked what we had going on here game one. But yeah, against decks with tons and tons of removal, you pr probably just need more creatures, more threats. And Sir Yulin Drake doesn't really count. So yeah, Thieves Sandy's a good one there. Um, you could have like a uh, Dream Caller Siren. This is a pretty good flash threat uh, after sideboard games if you want. Just a 3-3 a three, three flyer. You've been doing good with it in best of one? I could see that. I could see that. Yeah, I could see that. Our, our sideboard wasn't good, just in general. Like, none of these cards were good in our sideboard in any of these games. We weren't really sideboarding much. I I think we could probably, we may struggle against Mono Red. Um, and I would, I probably wouldn't play the Noxious Grasp. I'd probably play something else. Maybe a third, I'd probably play like a third Disfigure over the Noxious Grasp in best of one. But that's an option there too. Um, besides that, I've, I've playing these kind of games. I've wondered if we can make like, you know, if I just want to make a pirate deck, obviously it'd be a little different, but you know, like storm tamer would replace Terramander. If we make it a, a pirate deck, like this, this would just be kind of a different deck, but then, you know, we could play like departed deck hand. I wonder if like blue, black pirates could actually be a thing. The dream caller siren. I like, you know, obviously we have the poisoner. I like, uh, ruin Raider a lot. Ruin Raider could be pretty cool. I don't, I don't know if Ruin Raider would really work with this deck, though. I, I don't think it would work with this deck, but I'm talking about, like, a different deck. Yeah, but... <clears throat> you don't know how to make sideboards? I mean, basically, usually it's, like, think about, like, how, like, those games kind of play out against the control decks and what cards you want against them. The thing is, is this kind of deck is not a, a deck that, that has the ability to have a very good sideboard because everything that you want in the deck is here in our main deck you know like we need our we need our creatures we need our protection for our creatures and we also need some interaction for their creatures and that's kind of everything there so it's not like it's not like we have the ability to have a lot of great sideboard cards but yeah i think i think probably more threats though i think that's something that our deck could certainly use But, uh, yeah, Freebooter is a good pirate, too. Pretty cool little deck here, though, with Demir Flash. All right, so if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. And if so, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. But thanks for watching Demir Flash, and I'll see you for the next video.